Hello everyone and thanks for taking the time to check out this video. For today's brief presentation, we're going to be doing one more quite possibly final installment to our unexpected series on the SKS pattern carbine recovered from the scene of the September 15th incident in Florida. For anyone who hasn't seen the previous installments, one of the main focuses of my channel is hyper-technical SKS specific analysis. And while that isn't a skill that's often in great demand, it has certainly brought a few new viewers into the fold recently, for which I am appreciative. With that in mind, today we're going to be taking a close look at the photographs that came out yesterday, and in doing so, we're going to come right back to what this channel is best at, hyper-technical SKS specific analysis. Obviously, this impromptu series started with a very basic form of that, breaking down how we knew, for example, the rifle was not a Sega or later a commercial SKSD, but today I'm hoping to give a brief demonstration of exactly how far we can take those same skills. As discussed in previous videos, we're going to search this picture for immutable characteristics or features of the firearm which are not easily changed. Using those features, we will deduce what we can about the origin and provenance of this specific SKS pattern carbon. So let's begin. We'll start with a bird's eye view and then break down key components moving from the muzzle rearward. Big picture, this is a standard SKS pattern carbon. Obviously we have the aftermarket combat exchange stock and Pro Mag magazine, but those are not immutable characteristics and on their own they don't tell us a ton. Underneath those superficial features is a typical military type SKS with a 20 and 1 half inch barrel and no immediately apparent identifying features. That does rule out a few of the more exotic variants, but ultimately it leaves most of the possibilities open, so let's look a little closer. The first component we're inspecting is the front sight slash bayonet interface, which is a collar that is pressed and pinned on top of the barrel. This component can be changed, but that is an extremely uncommon procedure, and it is therefore a strong indicator of provenance. And in this case, that proves quite useful because this bayonet interface appears to exhibit less common geometry, which gives us a good clue as to where the component came from. Here we are looking at an illustration of the most common distinction between bayonet interfaces. The example on top is the more common variety, we call it lightning cut, and the example on the bottom is the less common, we call it non-lightning cut. And in case anyone isn't immediately seeing the difference, the lightning cut type has a rectangular chunk of material removed directly above the location of the screw head. That's why we call it lightening cut, because it's technically lightening the component, it's making it lighter. And we can see that this cut interrupts the angled edge, which runs parallel to the direction of the bore immediately above that same screw head. When we return to look at the rifle in question, we see what appears to be the less common non-lightning cut bayonet interface, and that's quite helpful. If that identification is accurate, it means that we are looking for a Chinese Type 56 carbine manufactured in or after 1966, a Yugoslavian M59 manufactured prior to 1967, or a Soviet SKS-45 manufactured at Tula in or before 1951. Now, it should be noted that there are in fact multiple subtypes of non-lightning cut bayonet interfaces, and if the picture was higher resolution, we could probably eliminate the Soviet type. The rear locking surface present on the Soviet type is smaller and presents at a different angle, and while I'm pretty sure this picture is depicting the latter Chinese or Yugoslavian type, the picture quality sucks and I wouldn't bet my life on it either way. In any case, we've still just managed to eliminate a ton of possibilities, so let's continue moving rearward to the gas block. Not much to say here, guys. It's a pretty standard SKS gas block. Technically, we've just eliminated 1949 production Soviets, leaving us with only 1950 and 1951 as possible years remaining, but that was already pretty much assumed. 1949 Soviets are extremely rare. In terms of the gas tube, the picture once again isn't super helpful. Here we would be looking to distinguish between one-piece and two-piece gas tubes, as well as just inspect the overall angle of the gas tube shoulder, but we really can't make that out in this picture. If we could determine that this was a two-piece gas tube, that would eliminate Soviet and Yugoslavian models altogether. Unfortunately, we're unable to make that distinction based on the photo. So further back we go, and now we're looking at the gas tube release lever, and believe it or not, this is a big deal. What we see is a standard release lever with symmetrical dimples, and this greatly reduces the odds of it being a Soviet rifle. It is still technically possible this component could have been changed during factory refurbishment, but generally we would expect to see this single dimple asymmetric type gas tube release lever on a 1950 or 1951 Tula. When we factor in that we don't see any visual indication of Soviet refurbishment paint, as well as the earlier cautious identification that it does have the wrong bayonet interface, we can say the odds of this being a Soviet SKS-45 have dropped low enough that we can cautiously table that as a possibility. 
Either way, let's continue rearward. Unfortunately, we also cannot get a clear view of the barrel lug. However, this image here shows us that a barrel lug is present and the overall appearance indicates that the barrel lug is full in length. If this were a pressed and pin barrel or it had a barrel lug that was short in length, we would expect to see some light coming through in this area here. Unfortunately, this doesn't help us at all. If we had been able to determine that the barrel lug was short in length or it was a pressed and pin barrel, that would have eliminated all possibilities but Chinese. Similarly, close inspection of the trigger housing is equally unhelpful. Upon close inspection of this area, we can see that this is a milled trigger housing. Here's a photo of the alternative, a stamped housing. Had this been a stamped housing, we could have once again eliminated all possibilities but Chinese. Unfortunately, that's just not what we see. So we continue searching and we're actually going to include our final two visible features at the same time. We're now looking at the receiver cover takedown latch and the bolt carrier. The reason we're looking at these two features together is because if these belonged to a Yugoslavian M59, we would expect to see assembly numbers stamped into both components. Again, the picture quality is poor, but I see no evidence of these numbers being present, so I am cautiously removing Yugoslavia as a possible origin for this rifle, leaving us with Chinese as the final option. And just to reinforce this hypothesis, we note that the surface finish of the bolt carrier has a unique matte quality, almost bead blasted in appearance, which is a distinctly Chinese characteristic which was most popular during the 1970s. It should also be noted that this finish was applied to refurbished rifles which were manufactured in the 1950s or 60s. Here are some examples from my personal collection of the finish I'm referring to compared to what we would expect to see from Russian or Yugoslavian examples. And speaking of my collection, a couple people in the comments were accusing me of just Googling everything, which actually is a fair accusation because Google is how I think myself and most people find 90% of information. It's 2024, that is how research works. But it should also be noted, I do have a modest reference collection, which a lot of my conclusions are based off of. And in case you don't believe me, let me just flip my camera around so you can see what I'm looking at while I record these videos. Either way, to summarize, I think there is a 90% or greater chance that this is a military Type 56 carbine manufactured in China between the late 1960s or early to mid 1970s, which I will point out is very close to the original prediction I made on the photograph that was initially released. I didn't initially include 1970s in my guess, however in retrospect I should have because the defining characteristic of 1970s Type 56 carbine production is actually a wide range of production techniques and while many, like the one behind me today, are very specifically 1970s in construction, many others produced in the 1970s incorporate features from much earlier. And of course what you do with that information is up to you, but I hope this video has served as a useful teaser into the very glamorous world of technical SKS identification. If you happen to want more of this type of SKS content in your life, don't forget to check out my SKS playlist. It should be popping up on your screen any minute now. Otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to see any other specific SKS content, leave me a comment below. And with that, thanks again for taking the time to check out this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.